so again, some of the common mistakes here, um, and there are some specific code provisions for ungrounded systems that a lot of installers don't seem to pay attention to in a lot of the inspections I do. Uh, the biggest one, probably the most common one that we see out there, is you know making that that you know common mistake of of using white wire for PV negative. So it's typically you know, 99 plus percent of the time uh, in the past on traditional galvanic isolated systems with a negative ground. Negative is ground, so negative is white or sometimes gray. Really, we prefer white. Um, so if you're going to be dealing with a an isolated, or excuse me, a non-isolated system like the Aurora, leave the white wire in the truck. Um, the only place you're actually going to see white wire would be, for example, here on the AC side. That's it. You're only going to see white wire on the AC side. Leave the leave the rest of the wire in the truck. You're not going to need it for the array, either on the array or in conduit or in a box. Uh, so we see that one a lot. The next big mistake, um, and this is becoming less of a mistake as it becomes more available, but if you actually read 690.385 carefully, um, that deals with ungrounded systems for solar, 6935D3 specifies that on the array, um, you need to be using PV wire, not just regular old USE2. Um, and, and in fact, pretty recently in the past, we did see USE2 as part of the uh, uh, actually coming out of the module itself. So PV wire started to come out in about 2010, was widely available. You can now get it in a lot of different colors. Um, one big problem that we originally saw with the installation of these types of uh, ungrounded systems for, for floating arrays, 698.35 requires PV wire, but as recently as you know early 2011, there were still a lot of module manufacturers that were just putting USE2 coming out of the junction boxes on their modules. In, in that case, those modules would not be suitable for use in a ungrounded floating array for a non-isolated inverter. Uh, good news is, is that since that time, I, pretty much every manufacturer that I am aware of is shipping their modules with PV wire coming out of the module junction box rather than USE2. Um, but do be aware, and in fact, you know, my recommendation, honestly, um, on all arrays, even if you're using a traditional galvanically isolated system, PV wire is so much superior to USE2. It's thicker, it's got a better uh, thermal rating, it's uh, got a thicker insulating jacket, it's much tougher stuff. Um, so PV wire is also oftentimes dual rated with USE2, so it's got the PV wire rating which also implies USE2. So PV wire can do all the things that USE2 can. It's variable, it's sun resistant, um, all that good stuff, but it's got additional um, insulation, additional thermal protection, and mechanical protection as required by 698.35 for ungrounded systems. I think it's a great idea for all types of PV system, but it's an actual code requirement for ungrounded, and a lot of people are still making that mistake. We see some USE2 out there on uh, floating ungrounded arrays.